Well, it depends on what when you're talking about. Uh, when um, we played cowboys and Indians and uh, cops and robbers, we could play in the big cornfield next to us, you know, and you could really get lost. And um, when we played cops and robbers, people, a lot of people, everybody smoked, I think, and they threw their cigarette packs on the ground. And Lucky Strikes had some gold on them, and we rolled up that Lucky Strike wrapper and used it for the gold in <laughs> Cops and Robbers. We played baseball as I got a little older. And that, the neighbors, you know, a lot of kids played, and that was fun. Probably, because I was always popping up. <laughs> I don't think so. Probably, but I don't remember. <laughs> it doesn't make me chuckle. <laughs> Probably. It wasn't anything bad or I'd remember. Okay. I think, well, they probably would be shocked to things in general. I'm talking about off this property, but um, on the property, it <laughs> gets the same thing. <laughs> they'd be shocked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think they'd like it. But I think that, it, you know, it's hard to imagine what's out there now. <laughs> that what we had was the same thing, the same place. Starting up here, there were three, I think those were pine trees that were along here, that were right along the driveway. And how far apart were they? Far enough for the car, the car to get caught in between them because that's what Jerry did when he backed out. This was all gravel. Uh, could I sit down here? Um, there wasn't any paved area up here. So, you know, every time anybody went out, um, it was a big bowl of dust. There was no um, road here going down to there. There was an old building out here where your kids played in it. And I think it was a garage, was it? And um, the pigeon coops down here, there was that one still there. And I think there was another shorter one here. And then there was that building where you played. And then the, the trailer, mom and dad's trailer was down there. And across from it was our garden hall in that area. And uh, except there was a, one big long building like that with pigeons in it. And then we had a lot of big trees around. Um, and coming around this way, of course, your house was smaller <laughs> there then. Um, coming around here, going up the hill, there was a building up there that they called a barn. It wasn't big enough for a barn, but it was there. Can you think of any other buildings? Where the house used to be. Oh yeah, the house used to be right there. <laughs> where the barn is? Yeah. Kind of where that palm tree is, didn't you say? Yeah, it was flat. Oh yeah, they, you know, it was built like this, and they built, they um, when they put um, an addition on it, it rained and got down into that, that, um, what do I call that? At any rate, the rain went in there and collected, and then all of a sudden it would start raining in the living room. <laughs> the rain had come down and collected in there. It was very small, um, two-lane road over there, and an airport down here, and across from it were big trucks parked, and eventually the golf course, but it was just those big trucks that parked there all the time, and then there were blueberry fields down farther on. On this side of the road was that uh, uh, big, um, they had, I think those were ponies, but they had the races, uh, and um, there were no stores there. And then across from that, on that side of the road, there was a church, a conference center, was that what it was called? Uh, I don't know what it was called, but it was a, it was a church place. And then Camp Evers was there, but of course different. It was a store, mostly a store then. And that bar that uh, where the restaurant is now, um, that was one of your dad's favorite places. And 
across, the, across from it um, was a, they used to have those kind of restaurants. Tom and I were just talking about it the other day. I can't, can't think of the name of it. But we used to eat there occasionally. Um, Scotts Valley had things here and there. They had the tree circus. They had the, um, those, what are the things that they make to look like people? They have them at the, at the like wax figures? No. Uh, um, they had movie stars and stuff. Famous people. Yeah, like there used to be one here. Figurines of people? Um, I guess you could call them that. I don't think they moved around or anything. I'll think of it eventually. Um, they also had... Um, see what all was along there. They had quite a few tourist things and places to stop and get a drink. Um, they, you know, stands where they had uh, ju all kinds of juices and stuff. Um, Mary See, my Parker. first car. First car I don't know which one was my first car. You know, because we always had a car in both our names. Our first car was a 52 Studebaker. But um, Barbara and Eddie Thomas had moved to Petaluma, bought a house up there where we were living then. And I would think that I probably was 24, 25, something like that. And, um, no, I don't think it was that old. Um, but anyhow, Art and Ray had this old Studebaker, and um, it was, a, I think, a 39. So it was really old. And Barbara was going to teach me how to drive. She had a permit, and I didn't have anything. And there was a schoolyard across the street in the corner from us. So she decided she was going to teach me to drive. So away we went around the corner with um, it was a schoolhouse and it was a, you know, four streets around it. And um, so there we got in the car and uh, off we took off to go around the block. And we got back to by our house and I missed the turn. And I ran into the car, parked car in front of us. So there I was with no license and she, uh, no license because she just had a permit. And uh, we smashed in the back of somebody's car. <laughs> and broke our, the, the headlight, and I don't know what else on ours. And um, our next door neighbor was a policeman. <laughs> and our, our um, neighbor directly behind us was a teacher, and he taught um, driving at night. <laughs> yeah, and fortunately, there was a football game that day, and so the police officer was working at the football game, and, um, we just told the guy we'd fix the car. It cost $49, I remember that. Yeah. And um, this, so then after that was over, your dad went over and talked to our neighbor behind and signed me up for uh, school. <laughs> oh, I had lots of good memories of him because um, when he, there, he was the first grandchild in my family and so Violet and Ray would loan it to him to us on weekends sometimes. And, you know, we thought he was God. And uh, he was the cutest little thing and the smartest little thing you ever saw. So we loved having him come up and do things with him. And I, I don't know, I always felt close to Kevin uh, just because I guess he was the only one. But I still miss him. He was nice. He would just stop by here, see mom and dad and see me too if I happen to be here. Probably when you kids were little kids growing up, that was fun, interesting, um, educational, <laughs> you know, a little bit of everything. So like the 50s and 50s to 60s? Um, yeah, probably. I'm amazed that it's still here. I think I said this for something else that you asked me, but, you know, you can get through anything. Everything has a beginning and an ending. And uh, all you got to do is hang in there. I didn't know they were. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know. What was it? Or? Yeah. It, well, it was just a plain old chocolate chip recipe, a cookie that you put chocolate chips in. And I don't know where I got the recipe, whether I had, it was probably on the bag. <laughs> well, there's so many that I can't remember them all. I remember that we had a cat named Goldie that I coaxed home from Sunday school one day. We had her for years. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was actually, I think it was a he. <laughs> and a big yellow cat. Um, we had a dog named Joe Lewis who kind of looked like a bulldog. He wasn't a bulldog. He was a mix and he kind of liked to scrap like Joe Lewis. And um, let's see. Of course, we always had Siamese kittens when we had, uh, what were their names? Um, Sing Lee and... Uh, Kobe. Kobe, yeah. So we always had lots of little Siamese cats for quite a few years. Um, as long as I can remember, we had cats and dogs. What about your dog, Kelly? Well, we only had her, we got her when we lived in Petaluma. She was pretty, she wasn't too smart. You know, she was, she was an Irish setter, but she couldn't swim alone. She loved to go to the water. We'd take her to Russian River. And Kelly loved to go in the water. Uh, but um, she would, uh, you know, uh, you had to hold her tail up. If you dropped her tail, she would <laughs> sink in the river. <laughs> Lassie was the sweetest dog that ever lived. Yeah. Uh, and I think all you kids are crazy about her. So that's all, all I can tell you. Poppy, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I liked all those big dogs. Yeah. That was funny. Um, I took them because um, Ruth gave me the piano. I don't think she was aware that she did it. And I thought that was terrible to have it sitting here and no one use it. And so I decided to take lessons. <laughs> and I knew before I started that I was not musical. Uh, and I was very much aware of it after a year and I quit. <laughs> I made it, you know, a big investment. <laughs> I went, it was in, um, was out by the beach somewhere. I told you before, but a little boy, I think he was five, had lessons just before me, and I always got there early, so I heard him play. You know, he played like an angel, and those little tiny hands were so small, I don't know how he did it, but he could hardly get to all the keys. Mm -hmm. And he made me feel very dumb. That's probably another reason why I left. <laughs> Where I worked, um, well, after I got out of high school, I went to work for AT&T, worked there a couple of years, and then Violet and I moved back to Frankfurt, and I worked for National Cigar Company, and that was interesting, you know, because you go out, and it nearly killed me when I first went there because it smelled so bad, so strong, and it hurt my throat, <coughs> but you get used to it. But uh, it was interesting to go out in the factory and watch them actually make the cigars. Interesting job. And I worked there until I came to California. And then I went to work, Violet and I both did exactly a week from the day we left Indiana. And I went to work for Kemper Barrett, which is the Admiral Distributor for the West Coast. And that was different um, because I was, in a, I was a write up clerk. And uh, we had salesmen all over the West Coast. I think we had about 20 of them. And they would bring in, or would send in their, um, you know, when they went to some place, they would send in whatever was in the billing, and we had to type it up. So that's how I started out there as a billing clerk or something. And, um, and I had a couple of little piddly jobs. One of them was for, they were starting a new company, and that's when they started Children's Records. I don't remember the name of it anymore, but they were three um, men in San Francisco who decided to, to well, I think one of them was Hales from Hales Department Store, who was an attorney. And then the other one was an attorney, and I don't remember the third one, I think it was a teacher. They were, decided they were gonna make a children's record, and so uh, they advertised for somebody to come in the office. I don't remember what they called it, a uh, 
secretary or what, but it was a big old room, really nice one. The merchandise mart it was on the ninth floor and the furniture was very nice. And um, there was a file cabinet in there with me and several lamps. And um, I don't think they gave me a thing to do. I worked there for two or three days. And I finally said, you know, I don't want this job. I, I can't stand that, you know, because they said it's gonna, one of these days it's gonna take off. And I said, no, I don't wanna take off with you, I'm going. And he said, you can't, one of the attorneys said, you can't go, you have to give two weeks notice. And I said, that's stupid. I had been here for two or three days and I haven't done any work. <laughs> so why should I have to give you notice? So I gave him notice and left. And um, that didn't give him any notice. I mean, left then, didn't go back. And next place was Gates Rubber, where they uh, sold tires and stuff. And I didn't stay there very long because we moved to Petaluma. Your dad went first and um, I stayed down for a month or something in San Francisco. And then he rented a place up there. And then I moved up and went to work for the city of Petaluma. And um, I was lucky again because um, they, I went to the employment agency and they sent me there and interviewed me. I went, I think, to the director of public works, which is the one I ended up working for. And he sent me down to the city manager's office and he hired me on a spot. And that was his last official duty, was hiring me to work for the city. The city had, was new. It had been, the city wasn't new, the form of government was new. They had a, a councilman and a mayor before. And so this was the city manager and all the departments. So that was very interesting. And um, let's see, from Petaluma I went to Richmond and same thing again, I went, um, the city manager at that time told me that he would give me um, a letter of introduction to the city manager of Richmond. He said, you know, it might help you get a job. So I took my letter in hand and went to the city of Richmond and they hired me on the spot uh, for a year, temp a year of temporary job. And it was typing the, um, they were changing the, uh, uniform building code, revising it. So that's what I did for a year, typed revisions for that. And then I had to take a test to get on a, to get on a list before I could officially be hired as a permanent employee. So I did that. And uh, in the meantime, I worked for the traffic engineer for a year. And then when they, I was on the list by then, I think I was third. And, um, both of the guys that I worked for wanted me, but I went back to building because I liked that better. And then let's see, from there was Cal Water and where I was there 31 years. <laughs> so that's it. Everything, whatever I wanted to, because I was not going, you know, for a degree. I was just going because I wanted to. The first thing I took was um, business law. Um, Probably the last thing, thing I took was health because I wasn't very interested in that, but when I decided to go ahead and get the degree, I needed certain things and that was one of them. It turned out an interest, to be an interesting class because that was when AIDS was just really, you know, big in the news and we had a special textbook about AIDS. I got a liberal arts because I, ha I had, I think I had 80 some units, but it, nothing went together. And I w did it help me anyway in my career? If you can call it a career, no. I'm having four kids. Oh. Okay, that's a good one. Oh, well, sometimes I can't think of a brave moment. Sometimes I thought I was being brave, but I wasn't really. <laughs> uh, I got Violet off the railroad track one time that was a pretty brave thing to do. I probably just stood there and screamed. I don't remember exactly how I did it, but we were walking down the railroad track because you had to cross tracks to get to town, whichever direction you came from. And um, 
there were no trains coming, so we were walking down the track. And all of a sudden, um, my mother said, the train, is a, you know, get off the track, get off the track. And so I stood there, <laughs> screamed. <laughs> I didn't, don't think I made any effort to get her off. Anyhow, she got off in time. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> I, I don't want to pick a happy moment because I... I've had many happy moments. Gee, that's a tough one. Um, I think probably one thing is that nothing is forever. You know, you always get through it, whether it comes out good or bad. And um, most things are correctable. If you have the will and the knowledge to do it. That's a good one. I don't know that, that I ever Gave anybody any sound advice? Do you? Oh yeah. Well, try not do you, to. Do you remember what you told me when I was pregnant with Claire, and I was I was afraid that I wouldn't love yes, I my do. second child as much as my first. Yes, I do remember that one of the girls at work, you know, talked to me because I was so afraid to have Jerry, because we thought Chris was the most wonderful thing that ever happened. And she told me that, you know, your heart just gets bigger. You have more love. You don't have less for one than you do another. It just, and I think that's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was one, uh, one thing I can recall right off the bat was about the, you know, not to worry about not having enough love for. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that's. That's only when after you've had one and then you're afraid that having yeah. another that you can't possibly love another yeah. being that much. You know, and you always said too that that you love them differently, but the, that's the true. equally. That's true too. Yeah. yeah. Yes, there's enough room for all of your feelings.
driveway. Oh, okay. To catch the bus in the morning to go to school, to work. That, um, <laughs> You're taking a picture of me licking my hand. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell I forgot all about that. I've got it on my pants. It's Mom, everywhere. Can I, it's can rhubarb I, cookie. Yeah. <laughs> Look can at I me. grab your laptop to drop these into your... Or, or yeah, dad's. I can do yeah. dad's eat too. Are you still recording? I can pause it for, for now. Yeah. Yeah, so. Probably my mother. Yeah. Hold on. Hey, come in and then be quiet. Go ahead, yeah. Okay, probably mom. And as, as soon as she went in the river, <laughs> hold on, hold she, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She would Piper, sing. hold on, Grandma, one second. If you tell Grandma, one second. second. Piper, come here. Sit. Sit, Piper. Sit, stay. Okay. Yes, okay. All right, sorry, hey. Okay, so refer to anything except family. So besides your family. Okay, Piper, stop pacing. What, what do you love? What amazes you about the world now that you love about the world? What do you what's, love about the world? What's amazing to you? Um, well, okay, hold on. I'm Piper. amazed that it's still here. <laughs> Can you repeat that? Sorry, Piper, I said, I'm lay down. Hold on. She's quick clacking. It's being too noisy. Okay. I'm amazed that it's still here. Grandma Jack's, the oldest one in her family, was probably Grandma. Grandma Jack's. Yeah. You, but you want to know... Uh, anything else about... I mean, you already told us a little bit about her, but do you have anything else? Memories about her? I want to be sure that, you're, that I'm getting this right. This is my mother's... Who are, who are just the oldest people that you remember being in your family? Yeah. And who I, were they and what did they do? Yeah. Um, probably Grandpa Sharp. I don't know how old Grandpa Jax was. Uh, but uh, Grandma um, Jax. Okay, Piper. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> um, okay, I was starting to think of something else the other day. I thought of something else that we should have asked him. <laughs> oh, I know what I wanted to ask. Since you got you're surrounded by animals, can you? How about your your grandparents on your grandmother's on on mom's side? Your grandma's. Well, I mean, <laughs> your mom's side. Your mom's side. Um. Okay. About dad. Piper, come here. Okay. This is also. Come here, Piper. Come see grandma. He's sitting there too. Your birthday girl too. Sit. So, I don't know if, I can't remember what the question was now. What else did you ask me? What else did you ask me? What was the name of your favorite generation? Do you have a, do you have a favorite generation? No, I don't. Asks, what name would you give the current generation? That was a tough one. I can't think of a word. If you think of a word, I'll agree with you. <laughs> I hardly knew him, and I didn't meet him until he was 14 because he left. Who? <laughs> my Who? grandpa Jack's mama, grandma's. Till you were 14. When I was 14. Okay. He left his family when she was 14, and he came back and looked up mom when I was 14. So. Can you also just say your name, your age, and what, what? day and year it is and some things about so that we we have that on camera what's your name oh <laughs> <laughs> velma <laughs> out of the room anyway yeah. and then we can she can go eat lunch now and anything else you want to say <laughs> i probably said too much <laughs> All right, that's it. Bye. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.